car is from the Brothers Collection of Muscle Car of the Week. And they've got some very, very special stuff, but I think this one is over the top. We're here at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals with renowned restorer, painter, fabricator, Charlie Hutton, mm. and the Cherokee Camaro. Yes. This thing's over the top, what is it? It's, it's so cool. You know, I mean, for me, it, it's an honor. You know, I mean, to, to work with the brothers and, and their collection, it's, it's insane. And, and when they, I gotta be completely honest, when the car first came to me, I really didn't know exactly what it was, you know? And because, you know, when, when they told me the, the Cherokee Camaro, it's like, okay, sounds familiar, but I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And then when I saw it, it's like, dude, this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> and, and what it is, is, is basically the car was pulled off the assembly line in 67, and it was given to Bill Mitchell, who is the head GM designer, Mr. Corvette. And, you know, the first year of the Camaro. So, of course, GM wanted to promote the Camaro and have their show cars that would go around and just to, to pump the Camaro. And so, with, with Bill Mitchell being such a Corvette guy, he did a lot of the Corvette influences. So, it's got Corvette-style split front rear bumpers. It's got a Corvette-inspired uh, hood with a uh, clear hood scoop, which is cool because then it, it shows off the factory-installed moon intake with the Weber carbs. And then as you go down the car at the back, you'll notice that the they cut like the back eight inches of the quarters off and they built these fiberglass quarter extensions with a real low profile spoiler. And then they put a fiberglass deck lid skin with that same spoiler on it. Well, when you look at that side profile, 68, 69 Corvette all the way through, you know? And, and the fun part is uh, trying to get the information of the car. You know, we contacted the, uh, the GM archives and they sent us a ton of pictures. And one of the cool pictures that we got is this car sitting on, on the platform, on their steel platform with a lot of the clay work for the hood and, and the car extensions, and then a bunch of pictures in the background wall. Well, one of the pictures in the background wall is the profile that would become the 68, 69 Corvette. So it's just so cool to, to have a piece of history and during the restoration part, just keeping all that in mind and trying to retain as much of the originality of the car as possible. This is not just a show car. This actually kind of was a styling exercise where they were kind of figuring out some things that would actually appear in production, but not on a, on a Camaro. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You know, and that's what's so fun about it. You know, because you think about, I mean, some of the ideas that you know was in his head for the new Corvette that was going to come out. Yeah. He was, like, teasing the public on the Camaro with it. Wow. Yeah, so. Okay, so now your involvement with the car. Uh, yes. How did it come to you? What kind of condition it was in? What did you do? Um, the car has never was never restored before we had gotten it. Um, it was uh, it was an original white car that they had painted as tech of gold and shot a red candy over top of it. And back then it was all lacquers. And when you do a candy paint job, you put a ton of material on. So this thing had lacquer check everywhere. I mean, clear to the rocker. So the paint looked horrible. And being that the car had been a pace car, they had, you could see the imprint on the door where some of the pace car stickers would have been. Well, and because of the candy fade. Tell me about the pace car connection because I didn't realize this was a pace car. Well, and, and the, the pace car connection is some of the pictures that we received, it was a pace car for some of the can, uh, some of the can am races. So wow. what was so cool, and, that, and, and some of the fun stuff about it too is, is we never um, stripped any of the undercoat in the inner fenders in the rear because there's rub marks on the inner sidewalls oh. and this car has air shocks in it. And you figure out the reason it's got air shocks is because one of the pictures, you got these three or four big photographers sitting in the back seat of this thing with their cameras out with all the Can-Am cars in the back. So you know they had to put the air shocks in to keep this thing up yeah. and then all the, the sidewall drag. And I mean, so it's a lot of cool stuff about it. So when you got it, you know, the question comes in about the one-off pieces, the yes. split bumpers, the hood scoop, this ducktail. Uh, were you able to preserve, clean up, and polish, or replay, or reconstruct? Um, yeah, everything, we completely stripped the whole car. Um, and But there's a lot of fun features, because this car, when they did it at the factory, they never pulled the front clip off of this when they repainted it. So when we took it apart, the, the firewall extensions that are under the fenders were still white. So we, because it was white. it was an original white car. So then when we took all the chrome moldings around the, the windshield posts off, all that's the white paint. So we never stripped any of that original white paint. And one of the fun little features too is on that front on the A pillars, they never pulled the rubbers out of the car when they painted it. Only the door rubbers, but not off of the windshield posts. So they just masked all that stuff off. 
well, there's still white paint up in there. So we retained all of that original white paint. We actually masked off those areas when we stripped the car down to bare metal and started over. And then we masked them exactly how it was masked when we repainted it the gold and the red. So you had to walk kind of a fine line because this car is restored to a quality on the outside that was probably far beyond what GM did, yeah. but then you kept some of the idiosyncrasies to keep the DNA. Yes, exactly. You know, and, and another fun feature was that uh, when, you, when you paint a candy, you have to paint everything completely together. Well, with the quarter extensions, all this car was actually painted apart in gold. Well, then when they bolted the quarter extensions on to paint the red, so when we pulled the quarter extensions off, all the mounting flanges and the backsides of those parts were gold. And even the front fender extensions and the front uh, apron, all those were painted off the car because when they pulled the factory bumpers off, mm. the bumper bracket that goes between the fender and the fender extension, there leaves that, that gap where the bracket goes through. Well, they had filled and leaded all that in. So when they painted those, they painted them gold off the car, but then mounted them on the car to paint it red. So we painted all that stuff just like we had found it. So the back sides of those panels are gold, but then put back on the car and shot the red. So just the red, you know, overspray that blew through. Yeah. So we tried to retain as much of that as possible. Well, and I guess, you know, people don't consider that when GM builds a show car, it's done in weeks. Yep. They plow through these things because yep. they got to get them out to the show. Yep. So what a lot of car builders might consider to be maybe sloppy or oversights, GM didn't care. They wanted to get this thing out there in front of the public as soon as possible. Yep, exactly, yeah. exactly. So take me through the drive line. I see it's got the 396 on it. Yes. You know, and all, all the factory stuff, you know, we just basically, we didn't have to tear into the motor because everything ran good. We just did all the refinish work. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and when we dropped the motor in tranny, you could see that, you know, a lot of the rattle can overspray because, you know, as the car had been traded hands, you know, people would just rattle can back over, just cleaning things up. So we just had to refinish everything, you know, and, and strip the tranny back to the raw, you know, and, and do all the things that would have been done to the car originally. The interior is very clean, but it appears to be fairly stock. The interior is the original interior. The, the carpet has been replaced, but the dash, the seats, the convertible top is the original top and interior that came on the car in 67. And that's basically and we, deluxe 67 Camaro? Yes, yeah, yep. Now, getting back to your job numbers, so you mean to tell me that all the custom pieces on this have their own number on them? Yes. On the, like, when we pulled the bumpers, and the bumpers are actually built out of fiberglass, which is crazy, but it's chrome-plated fiberglass bumpers. Really? Yes. These yes. Are? yes. And it's got that number engraved in it. Well, then the crazy part is when you look at the hood emblems, how small those are, the Mark IV 396. Yeah. Those have that same part number engraved on the back side of each one of those emblems. Really? Yeah. So it's really cool. And, and for us, it was an awesome opportunity, you know, and, and it's the history part that is so cool, you know, I mean, and, and that's what excites me, you yeah. know, because most people know me as doing, you know, the, the hot rod, street rod, indoor yep. show world, you know, where we're, we're cutting and polishing the bottoms of the cars and hand fabricating suspensions and stuff like that. And, and to be able to work on a piece of history that has the, the history that this car has is cool. It's a project bigger than yourself. You better believe it. Yeah. You better believe it. Well, we talked about the car itself. Let's talk about your work. I mean, the, yes. the finish is beautiful on this car. The fit well, is phenomenal. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's an awesome, it. awesome job. Well, but thank you told you. me that these are hand-painted stripes? Yes, hand-painted pinstripes. From the factory, the car was hand-striped. So before we stripped it, you know, we documented everything. We took measurements, and we actually traced out where all the stripes went. And so I had a very good friend of mine, Doug Batchelor, um, come in, and, and he did all the hand hand striping off of it. So Old shaky, huh? There you go. That's right. That's right. So. Well, this is it's truly amazing. It is a definite showstopper here at the Mills Car and Corbett Nationals. Uh, thank you for, hey, for thank your you. time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for caring enough to make this come out the way it did. Well, thank it you. It really shows. It's, I appreciate that. Wicked cool. Awesome.